Welcome to the podcast where we talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac. And this is Megan. And on this bonus episode. Yeah. Kind of. It's yeah, it's kind of a bonus episode. It was supposed to come out pre-Easter, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. So. We have cases and shit. Shit in cases. All right. Okay. <clears throat> what is uh, today all about? So today, I thought I would try and catch up to Mr. Six Part Series. <laughs> I'm sorry if my ability <laughs> has been on the road that it has. No. Um, so this is going to be part two because I actually had some massive kind of leaps that my abilities kind of took on. What are we doing? Uh, you still haven't. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I haven't told. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Okay. Um, We're recording during the day, so that's different. So it's giving me a different vibe. I don't know. But um, it's going to be about spiritual awakening because we've been asked about that, but also about my abilities part two. Yes. So, and Isaac's here to give some perspective on what he sees um, and kind of what I'm talking about because I think, he, you know, obviously he had a spiritual awakening as well. And so to get, yeah. kind of, no, it is when, no, seriously you did because when I talk about the definition of technically what a spiritual awakening is or what people kind of give the definition of a spiritual awakening, you, yeah, you had one. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. The whole yeah. connection to the higher self and getting in contact with my spirit guides hey, and all Hey, 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 you're giving away the sausage right now. No. What does it mean? Not you. <laughs> yeah. Um... But I thought we would talk about that. So, in this episode, I'm going to talk about shielding. Uh, like, how I put shields over specific spots. How I put shield over our house um, as a form of protection. Um, a little bit about uh, astral projection and remote viewing. Kind of like my... Even though we kind of talked about it in remote viewing, but a little bit more into that. Um, kind of the waves that happens with spiritual awakening, especially if you have abilities. And yeah, basically, in terms of spiritual awakening, conquering, uh, meditation, protection, and grounding, because I think those are the three most important things when you kind of are going into all of that. Are you going to start? Yeah, we're going to start. I guess we can kind of talk about spiritual awakening because that's kind of like where I started. And recently, in fact, that's kind of why we kind of fell behind the beginning part of the year, because as soon as 2024 kind of rolled around... I went through like a root, another spiritual awakening because it kind of happens in waves. And for a good portion of the time, I was kind of stagnant, you know, like I would improve my abilities practice. But I, for the most part, I was pretty stagnant, like nothing super crazy new happened, you know, like it did the beginning part of my journey, I should say. But technically, technically, the definition to spiritual awakening is the call to higher consciousness or in a state of deeper mental awareness. Hmm. So basically, the way I just the way I talk about it is that basically, you know, for a good portion of us, we were put in a box majority of our lives, and it's kind of that spot that you get that you and it could be listening to a good portion of people are normally put in a box from the very very beginning. You know, whether it's religion. Whether it's, um, you know, different culture, cultural things. Sometimes you're put in a box, you know, to believe like paranormal doesn't exist. There's this and that. You know, your purpose is to work a nine to five job and that's it. You know, like have a family, have kids and done. And kind of you get to this point and sometimes it comes from listening to paranormal podcast or having an experience yourself that widens your ability to say, hey, There might be more to just this box than what was originally delivered to me. So you kind of start down different avenues. And I know a lot of people, too, that's what ability started for them. Um, It's kind of like you go through a spiritual awakening with your abilities as well, or your abilities were dormant and something sparks it to then start a spiritual awakening and branch you out that way. So I know a lot of people have said... For us, 
that they've stumbled upon the podcast and at the very beginning they didn't really have like they weren't really going through a spiritual awakening they were asking some questions and with their abilities it was like they were looking through the paranormal world through like a keyhole and then when we started explaining things and getting into deep asking them questions having them kind of you know go through things it's like they're looking through an open door now and they can see everything so that's kind of how spiritual awakening kind of goes and there's good parts to it there's bad parts there's tough parts there's easy parts like it's all of the above um do you have anything to add to spiritual awakening that you think people would like to know about from my own perspective from what i've learned and then granted i always tell some people that I'm not psychic. I'm not medium. You are, right? You are everything that I'm not. And I'm everything that you're not. It's why we are the perfect couple. And i.e. we complete each other. Ah. Anyway, enough cringe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it comes to the idea that what I see and what I, what I feel is all like physical body. Right, but I still had to come to the conclusion many people have when their abilities awaken, right? Whether it be psychic or anything else, is that there's more to this world than what we have been told. And you might have experienced paranormal your entire life, like I have. And out of the blue, one day, all of a sudden, your abilities spike up out of nowhere, like did for me. I had no understanding of what happened or anything like that, and I had to roll with it. But then, meeting the right people and explaining the right way helped me and Megan get along to the point where we are now. Where in the last three years, about the same time, granted, you've had your abilities forever, but you never tapped into them as much as you have around the same time that I tapped into mine. So it's kind of like we started our, both our spiritual journeys at the same time to get where we are now. And now it's a whole other game. But it's coming to the awareness, I always say with spiritual awakening, it's coming to the awareness that there's more than what we've been told and more than what you understand. Hence why it, me and you have always said we've looked outside of the mundane religions that we're always told. Like everywhere and anywhere. Listen to other faiths. Listen to other religions. Listen to other cultures. Get their perspectives on the supernatural. Get their perspectives on the gods or any kind of psychic abilities from around the world. And you start learning and ga gaining um, knowledge when it comes to the whole idea of how psychic mediums are treated throughout history and currently. All across the world. Hence why one of my six names is Shaman. Or the War Shaman. Because mm -hmm. technically that's what I am. You, a psychic medium, but seem to be a jack of all trades when it comes to those abilities. But it's all about finding what you're good at, I would say. And then developing that. And then meditation, getting in touch with your spiritualness. Um, and I think real quick, there, like that. I, yeah. I think there's an, a distinction to make because I think the two get kind of intertwined to me. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and also we probably should put a disclaimer at the beginning of the episode. If you're not into spiritualness or all this stuff, uh, skip, skip this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's a big <laughs> part of like my abilities and how I navigate through things. And you'll find that out later in the episode spiritualism and i in my opinion spiritualism and religion are two different things religion is human's hand in trying to bring spiritualism into the 3d world right spiritualism is the connection you have to whatever god whatever gods whatever source you have and how you personally connect Religion is kind of like being part of a group that does that here, if that makes sense. What's their ideologies to that specific religion? How mm -hmm. they perceive the supernatural world? Yeah. So a certain faith might say this other faith is wrong or that other faith is wrong, but this is the right way to do it. No, this is the right way to do it. It's our argumentative about who says who's right and who's wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think with spiritualism, it's more individual versus... The masses. The masses. Yeah. And so, you know when you start bringing in religion so because i like for me i would say i'm more of a spiritual person versus religious person we both have ever well ever since we started this journey we both have come more of an ideal now when people ask us like what is your faith like uh, i would say we always say we're nordics right nordic mm -hmm. paganism but pff, even that's kind of a stretch for us but we do use Nordic runes as protection symbols, but we've always said because for some reason the Nordic gods seem to have our back with when it mm -hmm. comes to this stuff. So the Nordic runes seem to work for us. So 
we're going to keep using them. Um, any other faith out there, we're not saying your faith is wrong. We're just saying, hey, this works for us, so we're going to keep doing it. And I think with our viewpoints in the aspect of we're not it's the complete opposite of what you might think that we're saying that you know your religion's wrong it's the opposite that we kind of have an open mindedness to all religions if that makes sense instead of if, as long as it's like pure i feel like and the intention is good that's you know like I'm not judging you for whatever religion you choose to go. That is your path. And a lot with spiritual awakening, it is finding your own path and connecting with people that could help you. Because I know with me during spiritual awakening, the group that I started out with in terms of like learning about things is completely different than the group I have now. And I've kind of had like, again, waves of people that have come in and and gone that have taught me different lessons with spiritual awakening and my abilities as well. And... You know, like, obviously, I've taken things here and there and incorporated and found my own way of doing things. And so another big part of spiritual awakening is also paying attention to your connections, who you talk to, who's in your life and what advice comes forward. Because I know, like, the first group with myself of people that I kind of contacted with, um, they were kind of, like, edging me into, they were the ones that originally told me and it was like different people like those people never talk to each other i just say it's the first group because it was essentially the first group that i had come in contact with um but they had told me because i thought maybe at the very beginning that i was just a sensitive i just could feel things and there wasn't too much more that i could do i mean until i started explaining to these people who were full-blown psychic mediums of the things that i was able to do and they were like hey don't limit yourself to just being a sensitive start looking into other things and then that's when it kind of blossomed and then I had started looking into that a little bit before Isaac gained his ability I was like months before and I remember one of the psychic mediums said that she was laying in bed and it was a spirit that I saw a lot as a kid and she was laying in bed and she said she saw this girl come to her and this girl warn her that don't tell Megan to dive into her her abilities because she is going to get seriously hurt. And the psychic medium was able to figure out that it was more of a dark attachment than it was like a guide or somebody that was just trying to protect me or whatever. Long story short, once Isaac got his abilities, I was able to have that attachment removed. But if I would have adhered to that spirit or attachment I would have never dove into it and once I dove into it I mean that's when I full-blown was like seeing things and all of that and one of the things another one of the psychics told me um I don't think she's around anymore like on social media and stuff she was like super big when we started in with the paranormal community but she had said because I was telling her you know I'm confused as to like am I just going to be seeing things or what like I'm kind of confused and she says well I think you're going to have telepathy and I was like well I don't know about that that sounds because at the time I didn't go through all these concepts learned all these new things dove into the parent I didn't really have that on my back I just had what I was told in that little box what I was told with religion and some other things and she said well don't like limit yourself you know you're limiting yourself too much you're keeping in that box and you should learn to break out of it essentially um and it's easier said than done for others um it took me a little bit i think it was a little bit easier for isaac but for me it took a little bit so but easier for me i didn't know what i was doing yeah well no like i feel like he had already had sparks of this throughout his life And this was kind of like the real like push you needed to get out of the box. Me, I was kind of like fearful of getting out of the box too much. And I kind of like retreated back in. I would go out, then come back in, go out, then come back in. So. Many things I thought I would do with my future. Never this would be one of them. Yeah. Well, (laughs) same. But (laughs) but the one thing she told me to, to concentrate on was dreams. Like, focus on your dreams. That's where your bread and butter is, essentially. Um, That's where your stuff is. And I've always had dreams. I've talked about on here. I've always had dreams as a kid of, like, premonition and things coming to me and whatever, whatnot. 
And it wasn't until I started focusing on that that I started getting the understanding of astral projection. So I guess that's what we can kind of roll into because that's that's probably the most proficient thing that I have. One thing I want to say before you go into that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to spiritual awakening and searching for the right guidance, never go to someone who will charge you money for guidance because their entire prerogative is how much you can pay them. That is true because those people that I tell, tell that just said that helped me, they were willing to have a conversation with me. They were willing to help me out even without like, I think they did readings and stuff like that, but they were still able to help me without charging me. If that makes sense. They were able to give me insights. What he's kind of talking about too is the people that go, well, I can tell you this, but you got to pay me for a reading first. Like they have lesson plans for $120 for three hours or go to this lesson plan for $300. Go to my class for you. They're charging money to teach you the basicness. And guess what? We're giving away the farm for free in this episode. Yeah. Everything that you would need to know and anything that you don't, we don't discuss. And, and if you hear this episode, you know what? I think I might... You can easily message us. Yeah. And we'll and then, tell you for free. Yeah. And that's the thing. Because I know a lot of times, and I've and I will talk about on this episode too, I've ran into people that gatekeep a lot of information or will give you the recipe, but give you the wrong ingredients. And you have to figure <laughs> and you're sitting there hitting the wall, like, how is this so easy for this person? But this person I'm doing what they said to do, and it's literally the wrong recipe. I don't know. People in Italian families, I know this because my family has done it, where they give the wrong recipe. Like, if you go and you say, oh, that's so-and-so, that's so good, what's the recipe? And they give you, like, instead of a one cup of flour, it's a half a cup of flour, so it's slightly off. Or they tell you that it has no flour in it, and it's supposed to have flour. That's kind of the analogy that I get from that. Because this whole idea of spiritual awakening, which is everyone's if you're you even be paying attention closely to tiktok or instagram or anything like that you notice that a lot more psychic mediums are trying to sell themselves on, on tiktok and lives and stuff like that to gain more audience but also gain more people more customers essentially and this kind of mindset is creating what some influencer calling uh psychic psychosis essentially it will create a mindset that some psychics out there Say they have abilities of healing or you listen to them, don't listen to your doctors and all that stuff, and that I'll be healed by this psychic medium or this this uh, this Reiki healer or stuff like that who are to, you charge me $100 per session and stuff like that. Yes, that can happen, but the same can happen in religion. Or if uh, you put hands on me, that it, it, that will they'll heal me all the way through and through. <laughs> That same ideal mindset can be associated with psychic psychosis if you believe a psychic or medium can tell you the exact future of what's going to happen. Or or they can heal your body, stuff like that. There are few, I'm talking few people in this entire world who have Reiki healing abilities that can heal anything. Anything. But they're not here. Nor do they advertise their, their, their abilities. Because it probably takes a lot out of them to do so. And same for psychic mediums. Connecting to the other side? Yeah, there's plenty of people who can connect to the other side. Some more clear than others. Because, well, I think psychic abilities too, it's just like any kind of sense where you have people that have very, very, very poor eyesight that can't, can't see at all. And then you have people that have excellent eyesight that 20-20 vision their entire life. And I think it's just, or athleticism or... Um, we always been asked the question, well, can anyone be psychic? Can anyone play basketball? Yeah. Anyone can pick up the ball, dribble a little bit, and shoot a shot. Is it going to be great? No. Not everyone's going to be good. Some people are all right. Some people are pretty good. And then you have the pro athletes, right? Those guys are great. And then you have your LeBron James, mm -hmm. your Michael Jordans, right? Mm -hmm. These legends, these prodigies, these people that are the best of the best out of everyone. But everyone can play maximum. From the shortest to shortest, the tallest to tallest. People extremely uncoordinated from that. Everyone can shoot a shot. Yes, everyone can be psychic to an extent. But not everyone can be great. Not everyone can, sorry, not everyone can be good. Less can be great. And you got even less that are the best of the best. But we all have the potential to do so. So, um, can anyone be psychic? Yes. But like I said, it 
some people were born with a higher intuitiveness and to I, the other side, and some of us are just we call it sharp as a uh, we call it. There's an old analogy, uh, sharp as a bowling ball. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but I think too, like, and then you break it down to there's different psychic traits. Like you might be like, for instance, in soccer, say you're really good. You have athleticism, really good at soccer. You may be a fantastic defender, but your offense might suck or your shooting might suck or your goalkeeping might suck. So it's the same thing as like with different i wonder if anyone listening goes i don't know shit about soccer what are you talking about (laughs) sorry (laughs) sorry i played sports growing up i know i've said this multiple times on the podcast so that's the best analogy i have but like and then there's some people that are could play defense could be a goalie could play offense could do this and that play do different plays and they're good like a jack of all trades kind of and like for me like if i was playing on a soccer team my position would probably astral projection and remote viewer like that would be my ideal position <laughs> um that's why you're so short you got shielding up there too oh yeah shielding and like into it but like i could play that you yeah. know and do it well um but uh, and like i said there's some people that could do past lives freaking phenomenal they could see it clear like they're watching a movie and can retell every single detail they can't know if there's a ghost in their house yeah there's some yeah there's some people like that so it's just kind of like and and that's the thing too is don't sell yourself short it might be a skill too that you just got to kind of tap into more because like i didn't i didn't it took time for me to get the astral projection down because for me i focused on the dreams like almost being lucid i knew i already had lucid abilities and i just kind of focused on that i would ask specific questions i would talk to my guides before i go to sleep kind of do because my best meditation time is before i go to sleep and i would say like hey i have this question help me figure it out help me figure it out and i would start certain like for instance with the shielding oh well hold on let me retreat back let me retreat back so i would get used to uh which we call it, like like just the feeling of almost like that in between spot where you kind of get lifted out of your body. Like for instance, I know a couple people tell me they they feel the feeling when they get jolted back into their body, like before they wake up. Like they wake up just a slight hair before they actually physically wake up, and they can feel their body slam into their themselves. Right. Well, it felt me. It felt like falling sideways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the start of it. If you focus on that feeling right that sense that feeling everything that it feels like then you can also feel the opposite of yourself kind of going up right when you focus on that that's and you keep doing you keep you you have that because i feel like a lot of times psychics one of their things is that they catalog what things feel like they use their senses they catalog what the energy feels like so then you can repeat it right so once you have that kind of cataloged, then you could start going places and being here. At least that's how I started. I mean, every every psychic medium is going to tell you something different. It's just... It's all for people's perspectives. Yeah. It's, it's how you perceive the world. If your analogy is to describe things to people as based in comic books or anime, that's... I want to say I use descriptions of anime. I use more descriptions of comic books and movies to describe what I see and what I feel and how I see it and how I feel it. But other people might describe it in a different way. It's all their perspectives of how they live their lives. So uh, Megan's remote viewing skills of what she sees is not what someone else remote views in six keys. Though someone else could be on par with you in remote viewing, but they'll see or they experience something entirely different. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. But that's that's the best way if I had to describe astral projection to someone. It's that feeling. It's that feeling of kind of like, ri- I don't, see, I can't even describe it. It's like rising up, but it's like pulling yourself out of your body a little bit. But do yeah, I know it sounds weird. No, I just I just I just remembered a perfect analogy. Um and it's from, from Twilight. Oh jeez. <laughs> For anybody just listening, this is he's an OG Twilight fan. I wanna say OG. Okay. Probably someone before, way before I was, but I'm a you, mega you, fan. Yeah. Anyway. Um No, uh fuck it was, I think it was Carlisle was describing the abilities of people. It wasn't Carlisle. Who was it? Was it? 
Someone who fucking... Anyway, the whole thing was that it was describing why vampires have different abilities, but some were always the same, right? Everyone can be a shield or everything that be like this, but it's never the same kind of shield. It's never the same kind of attack or the same kind of ability. He said, not everyone thinks the same way. So never, no, not everyone's going to have the same kind of ability. You can have some people who are both the same kind, but they're never going to be exact because no one ever thinks in the exact same way. So that's why psychic mediums might perceive their abilities differently in how they read it or how they experience it because they think in a different way than someone else would. Mm-hmm. So that's the uh, that's the was I try to. That's a better way of describing it. Yeah, yeah. And that's so that's how I kind of feel. So taking that astral projection thing is how I kind of learned how to shield. So um, after astral projection, I kind of was able to start. A lot of times you'll hear people say, like, imagine a big ball of white light in front of you and you just kind of like shower yourself over. Started working with that concept. Um, And that's where a kind of shielding started. So one of my protection things that I used to do way back when, especially when we would paranormal investigate, was I would salt the house, which is mixing. I mean, they do this like they've done this centuries and centuries ago. Um, I would take like natural healing herbs and scents like frankincense and myrrh um like fragrance oils and um i would mix it and i would sprinkle it in a dome shape well not in a dome shape but in like a big circle around the house basically wherever i wanted that shield to go it would go and it worked but then people start looking at you crazy when you start going and buying a whole shit ton of salt it gets expensive And I felt like it wasn't working as efficient. So I knew I had to up my protection um, because that's really when Isaac started imprisoning and stuff like that. So it was like everything was coming at the house. Like there was, it was bizarre. Um, And like I've said before, we live in a neighborhood where there's probably like 12 portals and crazy stuff. Like there, it's just, it's just a weird neighborhood. And I keep closing them. Yeah. And I keep popping up in different directions. Yeah. So um, I knew I had to do something. And one of the things that I did was I am a type that I get movie references. Not references, but I see like I, that's how I can compare things is like through movies and like visual stuff. And I was thinking and I was meditating and I was trying to figure out how the heck am I going to do this? I said, I wish I could pr- like do this big dome over the house, right? That's what I kept envisioning was a big dome. And so I was like, well, what if I can astral project to the outside of the house, start kind of working on like light energy from like myself and kind of do the same motion that I would do with the salt, but create like a dome around the area, like remote view and astral project outside of the house, amp up essentially and go around like how, what is it? Quicksilver? Or the flash. The flash. The flash. Is I don't know why Quicksilver always pops up in my head. Anyway. You didn't even watch. I know I have not. Age I have of Ultron. <laughs> I, yeah. Anyways. But you know what I'm talking about. Like that same, like really fast. So you just like, see a sh- yeah. yeah. And that's how I actually, when Isaac goes, Megan's going to go shield your house. That's what I do. Is I literally <laughs> <laughs> zoom to your house, right? Remote viewing and astral projection and put that energy around your house and it's far better than salting because like salt i would literally have to do it every two weeks to a month um not everyone can do what you have done but uh a best alternative yes is salting mixed with a certain kind of herbs of protection yeah um we also buried four stones in the corners of our of our property which we use as a connectors and stuff like that. But uh, as we originally used to help build the shield that originally was there before you learned to shield. Yeah. So I always, there's different techniques and things you can do to protect your home. And I suggest to anyone in paranormal investigating to do so, because regardless of what you tell spirits to do, you can't follow me home. You're not allowed to do this. Words are simply words. And without intent behind them, strong intent, possibly you're playing with half, half, Sorry, even with strong intent, half are probably going to listen to you. Others go, who the hell are these people to tell me what to do? 
and they're gonna follow you home and grow. They don't care. No. And people say, oh, if you're respectful, you're really this or like that. And I th- and I yeah. think and I think too, if there's that small, slight thought in the back of your head that you kind of want something there, you know what I mean for to experience it, it's gonna. It's best to say a human spirit most likely will, will stay back. Yeah. But a dark entity who can care less about what you tell them to do? Oh, no. Game on. They will follow you home. They will do whatever they want because who are you to tell them otherwise? Yeah. So, as I always say, if you're in investigation world and you go to some shady places, some dark places, I suggest protecting your home at the fullest extent. Otherwise, you're going to have bring home stuff with you that's going to cause problems, especially if you have a family. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want your kids getting tormented by something that you brought to the house unintentionally. Yeah. To your home. And after shielding, it kind of led to being able to shield myself. Because I used to have to, holy crap, amp up on crystals and necklaces and bracelets. Put it to, this way. It used to be so bad. Like when I would go to like stores or, or any places like that to a point where I would absorb so much energy that I would have to literally wear like crystal bracelets around my ankles like underneath my jeans and it was to a point where i was just like dude i'm sick of doing this because i would start forgetting my crystals and then get overwhelmed by energies and take on everyone i was like no i need to figure out how to shield myself so when i leave the house essentially i take like a portable shield with me and when my son leaves the house as well because he gets affected by people's energy put like an invisible or not invisible but like a little portable shield around him and it's not as bad because there's another thing too that i came to notice at at certain spots not all the time but depending on like because you think about grocery stores have a lot of transactions to where a lot of people come in come out come in come out a lot of emotions going on and all of that and you don't know what the grocery store was built upon um, land wise, if there's anything there, I mean, he had a pool before at, in the middle of Target, you know. No, we were so, walking up to Target. Yeah, we were walking right up front. to Target. Yeah, looking so, for meat. Ew, gross. That's what it said. And so, there's things that I I notice. One one specific thing that I noticed that was at specific spots was these things that I call, and this is something that I coined essentially. I mean, someone else may have coined it something else, but just in case someone goes, that's not right. That's not what you call that. I just call it that. Um, It's called energy pockets, or at least that's what I call it. Energy pockets, which is like stagnant energy that just literally sits. If you were to see it on the ether, it'd be like a, just a spinning ball of energy that's just sitting there, right? And sometimes it's neutral. Sometimes it's positive energy. Like if you've ever gone through a spot and you're like, damn, this spot feels good. All right. Right. And you instantly get amped up. Well, then that's somebody almost that left an imprint of positive energy there. But there's also the bad part. And I've gone through one at locations before that, like, was bad. And I've gone through um, some at grocery stores before where I went into this one spot and I literally felt like throwing up. I had just really bad, like, panic attacks. I don't get, like, anxiety and panic attacks very often. But, like, it literally, like, I had to leave the store. So I was like, I'm not going through that again so i would shield myself and now in investigations that that's how i protect myself a lot of times is i shield myself um and one thing that i specifically want to talk about before we kind of get into the new stuff of my abilities i kind of also want to talk about this one thing because i this happened to me all the dang on time when i first started investigating so there was a feeling two feelings i want to talk about first feeling was i would start getting back pain and yes, I have back problems here and there. and Not like mine. I, yeah, not like yours. But I would notice it would not happen until I was at a location. And I was like, what the heck is this? And then I was told it could be a psychic attack or whatever. Nope. Like, whatever. But I got to huh? You might have back problems in the future because you had epidural. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll find um, out. Yeah. <laughs> but... uh. So, there's that rumor. Just in case nobody knows that, there's that, like, rumor thing. I don't know. that. Your mom went to it? No, my mom didn't have an epidural because there was still rods in her back. Oh, yeah. So, she had to do everything natural. Ugh. Yeah. I don't... I commend her for that because... It's funny. She did that, but then, like, if you, like, 
pinch her or something, she over dramatizes the <laughs> pain level. It doesn't make any sense. And had back surgery, which is considered one of the most painful surgeries. And yet you pinch her and she, oh my God, what are you doing? So side note. <laughs> um, Throw your mom on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the, so I would get the back feeling and I, okay, psychic attack, but what does that mean? And for the long time, I thought like maybe some a negative entity, like I was feeling it before everybody else or whatever until I meditated and I figured out and I asked a question, well, why do I get this? This is an annoyance. I don't like it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I get anxious at locations because I start feeling like it literally felt like my back was cracking. And I had noticed that sometimes it would, it would, not be that bad someone gave me what is it like calming oil which is like again herbal stuff and like oil to like calm you and whatever and it was fine and i found out later on like recently probably like last year that that feeling happens when a spirit is trying to imprint on you is what i call it which is not anything bad it doesn't necessarily have to be something bad i mean a a negative spirit could do that to you but it's something where it's kind of like they're kind of shoving energy on you to feel what they felt. So if an, a spirit is trying to get you to kind of feel what they felt, feel their energy, kind of basically cut the line and say, hey, these people want you to hear them, but I want you to feel what I felt. That's what happens. And the reason why I kind of came to that conclusion is when we went out um, on an investigation with Michael and his family his wife and I believe their daughter was complaining about their backs. And I was like, well, golly, I remember feeling that. I don't feel it so much more now. I mean, it has to be where I'm just completely getting bombarded by spirits um, for it to like go through the shield and kind of like make me start feeling it unless I kind of want to feel it and I allow it to be felt. But saying that it's also important when you start feeling that if you don't want to feel that to say hey, I get it. You want me to feel it, but step back. Because Mike used to always do that mm. um, at locations from our previous team. He used to always have to tell them, hey, you're starting to affect me. Back up. Because they're just so desperate to kind of get their voice heard. And depending on what's there and how, you know, they don't want to wait any longer. You know, if they got something to say. And if there's a big line of spirits, essentially, trying to communicate, they want to cut the line. You know, so that's one thing to be aware of. Um, another thing to be aware of is I know one thing that I did when I first started diving into abilities and I still do it today is when I'm getting a huge kind of like download or a huge just burst of energy from spirits, right? Like when they're really trying to just throw as much as they can at me to kind of understand their perspective and stuff like that. I will get these things that almost I could it could be the the middle of summer and I start shivering. You know this, you've seen me and I start shouting out words. And I forgot, I remember somebody somewhere on one random page on one of those like healing pages, I don't even know, talked about it. And I think it's like shuddering or something like that. But it's essentially when you're just getting like a download and you there's just a lot of energy being pointed towards you and it comes out that way. Because obviously when, you know, something is trying to confirm, sometimes you'll feel like a warm feeling as confirmation or you feel a chill. Well, it's like an overload of that. So those are two kind of like physical things that you could feel that kind of, you know, some skeptics might say, oh, it's just back pain and you're cold. But no, from my experience. Well, it's funny you took the chill thing. That's what I would feel when I would filter energy through myself. The old way when I used to pull energy. But it was strange. I'd be sweating in a hot, like a hot outside, like it was just hot. And then all of a sudden, like, like a chill ran up my spine. And, you know, the neutral energy would leave me. But don't do that no more. Yeah. You know, I don't want no right side of my face gray and aged and the left side going, hey, we're still young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And two, like everybody, what might be the thing for me may not be the thing for another psychic medium or for you listening. So it's just understanding and kind of sitting with yourself. And that's where meditation and kind of mindfulness kind of comes into play. Grounding yourself, 
all of that stuff comes into play on helping you kind of move along this process, whether you have abilities or not, because it could definitely help calming of the mind, staying grounded and anchored and having a spot where you can kind of brain dump at the end of the night and ask questions and, and kind of get answers, even for somebody that doesn't have abilities. <laughs> It doesn't have abilities. It could help. It could it help you kind of ease through life a little bit easier. But I guess we should kind of... And if you guys have any questions, please message us because I don't mind answering. Um, there's a group of people that I actually talk to on a daily basis about... We just throw ideas and perspectives and things off of each other. So if you want to do that, I don't mind talking to you. One thing I guess I have to make abundantly clear... Your abilities, I'm talking about you, I'm talking whoever is listening to us right now. Your abilities were given to you for a specific reason. Same reasons I have mine and Megan has hers. And everyone's ever had abilities has had them for specific reasons. I wouldn't let anyone, anyone tell you otherwise. Because if you understand the whole existence of life and the, and the idea is that if we live past lives, right, we choose our next. It means you chose your current life you chose this vessel that you're in now and it came with psychic abilities because you needed to do that whatever reason well that's up to you to figure out i can't tell your purpose in life you have to discover it yourself but you chose knowing you have psychic abilities so your abilities are important and regardless of what a spouse or friends or, or a lover or partner or whoever tells you otherwise you're crazy, you're insane, religious people, whatever like that, that's wrong, it's of the devil. No, 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 no. You have been given it a gift to connect to the other side that most people choose not to believe in. Not disbelieve, choose not to. For fear of what actually could be real. They're happy with their ignorance. But you have been given the sight or sound to the other side more than anyone else. So to disregard a gift that allows you to see the other side, to know what's there, to have connection with people who have crossed over to the other side is a detriment to your own existence. So, I'm just starting to get that out there. Damn! All right, Mr. Uh, should have you at conventions or something. I feel like you're going to be doing that in the future. Amping people up. Yeah. Like, that makes me want to go out there and just... We already are. Use my abilities! No, <laughs> just kidding. So I guess we can kind of get into kind of like what's coming up now. So we have come to find out that I think that... So when I first started... So for anybody that knows, and they've probably... What? I had a hard time getting this out. Yeah, I know. this. It's <laughs> like so many thoughts. And that's the thing. As I'm glad I'm doing this episode now because I had recorded it way back when... Like, a, maybe, like, six months ago. And the audio was in, was bad because it was just me doing it. Mm. And it just didn't feel right. Like, I wanted to get it out because people were requesting it. But it just didn't feel right. And then now it feels more right than ever. Like, to a point I was like, if Isaac don't... If you don't want to record, I'm going to record. Like, um, and a lot, a lot of things. I know I'm probably going to miss some stuff, which is going to irritate me to no end. Well, that's um, why I have six parts. <laughs> but there's so much i want to tell you guys and and say because i know it's gonna help at least one person so i'm having a hard time kind of bringing it out because it's almost like two of my guides are saying hey don't forget this don't forget that and i'm like yee i'm trying to talk dudes you know but and so but one of the things that we've kind of found out is when i first started abilities and i worked very very closely with mike who is part of shadow walker um way back when you've heard him talk on here multiple times you've probably seen him on lives before if you've you know stuck with us but he was for a good portion of time one of my mentors and teachers and one of the things he used to always tell me and i never understood was that i could scan memories and i was like what like uh it was kind of like the same thing i got about the whole telepathy thing i was like mm. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. It doesn't feel like I'm at that level yet. And I don't understand why. Um, until recently, because 
So I've talked about intuition. I have very, very strong intuition. Every reading I've ever gotten, the first thing they bring up is intuition. Like, yo, your intuition has steered you right in life. I was like, yeah, when I see somebody, right, if I don't like them, no matter what they've done to, they've done absolutely nothing wrong to me, but I don't like them, there is a reason why. And sometimes in life I've gone, screw that. I like this person. I'm going to, or not like my, almost like my ego self is telling me I like this person. They've done nothing wrong. I'm just going to ignore what like my inner thought is saying and just hang out with them. And I've always, always been wrong when I've done that. We also learned that your degree of dislike, your emotion uh, level against a person shows how strong how I put it, what, how much damage they can cause to you, mm-hmm. depending on the strength of that. Granted, it could be just an annoying kind of like, eh, it's not something to be a terribly a problem, but it could be essentially versus I do not like this person. Get him away from me. I don't want to look at him. That's someone who most likely is going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah. If I, if I, if I, if you're, if you ask me and people that work around like work with me are aware of this and i've i bring it up to everybody because it's like i don't i am pretty much a person that i don't like confrontation i don't necessarily i'm pretty much nice to everybody but if i don't like you i don't like you i cannot i can't and there's certain people that like i've ran into in life that it's like i i don't even want to be in the same room as you and it's almost like my alarm system in my body and in my head and stuff like that just goes get away get away from this person danger where i was in danger yeah and no one gets a reference no (laughs) And I, and I hate it because like sometimes it doesn't give me the answer right away. And that was the issue that I was having is I just, I couldn't provide anybody any proof. I just said like, I don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like their energy. But also, we've also met a lot of other people we've talked to who said, oh, I got the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, either read a person's aura or is all like that. But for some people who don't know the reason why they don't like somebody, but they know they just said they don't. We have a perfect conclusion now. We've figured out a reason why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And this is going to make a lot of people uncomfortable to be around you now. Oh, <laughs> I know. But, but, but there, and that's the, and this is where I'm going to get at. So with this kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. This, this realization that I've had recently, it makes sense as to, there's a couple of things. So I know if you've heard on me heard me multiple times on here say I always feel like there's so much information locked in my subconscious but trying to get it out is a pain in the ass it comes out in dreams sometimes but for the most part it's it's just like stuck there and that's the thing I'm kind of working on next is being able just like I can astral project on command without being asleep I can be awake I don't even have to close my eyes I kind of want to be able to pull from my subconscious when I can so we have come to find out that when I look at a person, I pretty much scan their memories. And if there's a memory that would cause a or an act or um, stuff like that that would cause issues, it brings like it's almost like somebody going through what are those little things that like the airports that go off when a metal detector yes thank you I, it's a lot of thoughts going through my head right now sorry no i, um, I, I we were talking about that and i'm mm-hmm. accurate a perfect analogy essentially you see people's evil you see their sin essentially no. and <laughs> Don't say that. People it's gonna... it's what it is i know he's like that oh shit people are like oh fuck that you don't Thing is, though, you don't know what it is. You know there's something there. Granted, it could be something, like I said, the level of emotion determines what it is. So it could be something done in the past, something like that, and you, kept, uh, you have a weird feeling about that person, and it doesn't affect now. Or it's someone doing something right now, and it hits way like I that. Should, I should say this, okay? And this is, I'm going to laugh because I know some of these people listen to the podcast, but if you talk shit about me and Isaac and have very ill intentions, I know who you are. (laughs) I know who you are. You made a lot of buttholes pucker up right now. (laughs) Yeah, no. 
I'm dead serious. I'm sorry, but that is the facts. I know exactly when it happens. I know who is doing it. And that's what I think also makes me a good candidate to pick out like evil eye stuff. Like I work with a lot of people. I don't really talk about these type of cases, but people that get sent evil eye stuff and negative energy, I work very closely with them and help them get through that. Because when it comes to that kind of stuff, like I can pick it up. Like I will be, I will be scrolling through Instagram and a team that maybe we thought would be nice to us has the complete opposite interactions or not inter but complete opposite intent. And it saves me from a lot of like, obviously sometimes when you're involved in a big community, you kind of like just try and get along with everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. It's obviously a very intense community at times, but I know exactly who to steer away from that's the best thing to put to steer away from not to work with because i know their intentions are not kind towards us no because like you're seeing their evil you're seeing what they can do what they're thinking now what their their ideals of you or something like that who can affect or damage us in the future hence why you we kind of you that's why i say you mind the field of potential problems when it comes to certain people and this as i said this is what we have come to conclusion with with if you have the same kind of ability you look at someone and you don't like them and you understand why you're subconsciously i don't know if you're scanning the memories but you have subconscious information that you don't know to yourself you just interpret it through feeling and emotion of what that person is that person could be doing something right now could have done something in the past or is planning to do something that is going to be to your detriment that's going to be a problem for you hence why your subconscious form your higher self is telling you bup, 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 get out of this person's way avoid them at all costs mm-hmm. they're going to be a problem depending on the strength of the emotion mm-hmm. and that's what you we well we were talking about this like what, a week ago yeah. and then we come to the conclusion that is why right that's why because you're scanning memories because well how do we come to the scanning memory conclusion that's the interesting thing remember you touch Touch the earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it started. So, like I said, I started having crazy, like, downloads and crazy, like, going through abilities and stuff like that. And I started looking at objects and kind of seeing glimpses and kind of, like, how they got to me, right? Like, almost like the steps it took to get to me, right? And I was like, oh, snap. Like, how it was made. It was weird, Right. So at the very beginning of my journey, I would actually see myself lay down on the land of different locations and I could see what happened on the land or objects. And even in certain investigations, Mike from the past team would ask me to hold objects. And at that time, nothing would come into play. But now I understood. So I was laying down one day like on the floor of the house and I laid exactly how I kept seeing myself because it was just like you know that memory kept replaying so I was like let me just see what that means so I laid down and I started seeing memories and like this house in particular has been in my family since the 70s and my grandma's lived here since the 70s and I was seeing memories before I was born and I was like whoa 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 right and that's how we kind of got through the scanning of the memories thing and i kind of because i had seen that at a past couple locations that we had been to i started actually seeing that that essentially became a catalyst your ability to fill the the that was a catalyst for the whole idea of scanning memories, right? Because you're scanning mm-hmm. the memories of things you touch. That was your conscious mind doing that. Your subconscious mind, unbeknownst to you, was scanning memories of people we came in contact with, people you would see, people you look at, and knowing their history, but also knowing their evil, knowing what they've done wrong, what they're doing wrong, or what they plan to do wrong. That could be against us, essentially. Mm-hmm. So we learn to avoid them. But then again, also you get... Attention by by looking at certain, funny enough, wrestlers. Like, if you see a pro wrestler, like, I don't like that guy. I don't really like that. 
because apparently he's he or she is doing something wrong or planning to do something wrong mm-hmm. or they are, are a piece of crap who knows right yeah but um because I, I use that because i watch wrestling you see people on the screen. yeah i always it's funny because like there's been so many times where i've said oh this i don't like this person so and so this and this and that and that and then you come out later and you're like um so they have just been found like cheating on their spouse or yeah. whatever it might be but um it's knowing the potential evil depending on the emotion or the strength of your resentment towards that person. And so, and like I said, th- and it's funny, this is kind of funny. So one thing that's hilarious is that obviously I interact with a lot of people with the paranormal community, right? And a lot of these memories or these segments will come out in my dreams, right? So I've actually had where I've had dreams of one in particular person from a team will come tell me something about another person and another team. Like, hey, you might want to watch out for this person. It's kind of it's kind of ironically funny that that... And then sometimes bad stuff will pan out later on or whatever. Um, I actually had that happen um, before... The split of Shadow Walker happened. So before the split of Shadow Walker happened, um, there was a convention. I had a dream about this convention we were at. It was this underground warehouse. Um, and there was a bunch of teams there. And they it was like one group was leading with one group. One group was leading with another one. And the person that was, I'm not going to say the name, but the person that was like splitting the groups off was somebody that is, a pretty big person in the underground paranormal investigating world. Like it's not a huge person. He or she, I'm not going to say has done things with bigger people, but isn't like the level of like, I don't know, like Sam and Colby or, or Kalani ghost hunter or or something like that. But, uh, that person came up and separated our group and separated me and Isaac from Mike and Megan. That was part of our group. Mike and Megan were part of group two. Me and Isaac were part of group one. Right. And I, in the dream, I was arguing the fact that like, why are you separating us? This is not what we do when we go on investigations. It's always like me and Megan with me and I, or with Mike and Isaac, we're separate, but we, you know, work together. And she goes, no, 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 no. You and Isaac are over there. Mike and Megan are over there. And it comes to find out everyone she sep- he or she you already separated <laughs> in group two was people that disbanded from their teams. Teams that completely stopped, podcasts that completely stopped, and group one is still doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like what happens. So, um, As I said, more people are going to be more uncomfortable around you now because they're going to wonder... You know, can she know my darkest secrets? No, well, not really. It doesn't work like that. Well, I don't know how it's going to work in the future. I know I'm going to put some sort of boundary for myself. So I'm not just, I don't want to be to the level of where I'm, well, I don't want to be to the level where I'm touching somebody or somebody touches me. It's probably why I don't like hugs, to be quite honest. Um, I don't like people touching me. That's, but I don't want to be to that level where I touch someone, someone touches me, and I see everything. I just don't want to. I'd rather just know the feeling of bother with them or don't bother with them. So well, I, I, I was telling Mike from the paranormal, I was like, count yourself lucky that you're in our circle of associated people. Because obviously, whatever you think was bad you've done in your life obviously wasn't bad enough that you uh, that Megan feels like we can't work together. Yeah. And it goes with everyone we associate with, everyone we've ever worked with, everyone that we continue to work with, that continue to talk to, continue to get their information. You're all fine. Regardless of oh, what yeah. you think the bad thing you've done in your life is, uh, it's not that bad. No. It's not bad enough that we don't want to work with you. Mm-mm. So, No, it's very few people. There's like maybe I can count on one hand right now the, the couple people that I'm staying away from. Um, so it's not anything, anything... You know, but also it helps you um, root out the charlatans. Yeah. 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 And it's just like I said, I don't like confrontation. So it's kind of like my own personal way to avoid that because I just uh, me, me, me. I just I don't know. <laughs> um, 
But like I said, hopefully, because I'm working on that ability. But here's the thing that's interesting. So with that ability, and this is something that Christy from Unknown Paranormal came up with. Because again, it's a group of people we like uh, that I talk to on a daily basis. We talk about abilities and dreams and stuff like that. We've done 18 home cases with. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that she said that she thinks is something that I could do. So... Right now with the person placer thing, the actual seeing and scanning of the, the object or seeing and scanning in the conscious mind is touching something, right? I have to touch it kind of like how Isaac had to, at the very beginning, had to hardwire in to see someone's mind for us. That's actually grab their hand. Now he doesn't, right? He can just shoot his tendrils and look at your mind for us. And for everyone going, what the hell is she talking about? Uh, Shadow Walker episodes one through six. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Um, but she had the idea, so you can astral project. Why don't you just astral touch somebody in a sense or a location? Like you touch your astral project to a location and you touch the wall or you touch the ground or you actually like remote view and astral project and lay on the floor of whatever building I'm going to. You ever saw 13 ghosts, have you? No. Uh, Matthew Litter, 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 Leonard, Leonard? Matthew Leonard, the guy from Scream. Yes, Lillard, Lillard, Len- Lillard. Leonard? I think it's Leonard. I think it's Lillard, like Lillard. Like Lillard. Lillard. Anyway, that guy, uh, Shaggy, the actor played Shaggy. Uh, his character in Thirteen Ghosts was a psychic, but he did it by touch. Like if he touched someone, he saw their past memories and stuff mm-hmm. like that, or like their trauma. Mm-hmm. And he that's why he was helpful for the the bad guy essentially that he would he remember in the opening scene there in the, in the junkyard he touched his hand to the junkyard and he saw like all the past murders that the ghost was still doing and what he did when he was alive mm-hmm. at that location well what actually kind of like ign- that's what it reminded me of when you're talking about that yeah well yeah. what kind of ignited all of that right is so again i'm very visual so i was actually watching me and my sister were watching haunting hill Ho- or haunting of hill house i think it's called mm. And everybody's got different abilities, right? So one ability that one of the daughters had was that she would wear gloves because she would touch things and kind of see the memories, essentially, of it. And there was a scene that looked identical to when I was a kid. Um, I was at a school dance. And you know how... It was elementary school, middle... No, middle school. And you know how, like, somebody... Like, guy, girl dances, you know, someone's hands go on you whatever you know to dance right yes okay so (laughs) told you a lot of things are going through my head right now and i had this kid that he was like essentially like out of my league he was one of those like super popular i was like the weird girl she he was super popular and he asked to dance with me and i felt like it was too good to be true and i saw a scanning of memories and it was kind of like like almost like a Carrie thing or like Josie Grossy, like how they egged her when the popular guy invited her to the dance. And it was like one of those situations. They were planning to do that to me. You seen that movie, but not 13 ghosts. No. <sighs> uh, anyway, so something like that was planning to happen to me again. I've said it multiple times. I got bullied severely. Anyways. So I saw that getting ready to happen before it happened and i remember i made an excuse like i gotta go and i just like ran off before they could do it but then apparently the next day at school they were talking about that in in the classrooms so i saved myself from the embarrassment but then like i said i saw her in that show do that scene and then it clicked in my head oh shit this is not this is there's that's so weird and so yeah so that's where that kind of came from. Yes, but we also came up with another conclusion. Oh, this abilities. one is this one's weird. Okay, so you and guys also are- going to have a lot of people asking, "What am I to Megan when she explains this?" Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so I know we always okay. So I, I will say I had a little bit of a funky situation happen. Where I astral projected recently and I couldn't get back to my body, if that makes sense. Which is going to make people go, what the... F-? 
Yeah. So if you ask your projectors, please be careful because apparently, you know, that can happen. So make sure your body's so safe. Kind of like how Isaac got like pushed by a demonic thing at, on base. This is kind of my equivalent to that. So I was going off. I was channeling information from when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid, there was certain, and I don't really talk about this part on here a lot, but there were certain time periods where I would black out. And I was trying to figure out why did I do that as a kid? Like, what was that? Right? So I was kind of channeling that. I was kind of like focusing on where that energy was connected to, like following the cable back, following the fish line back, right? And I went to this place that I got real freaked out about because it was similar to what Megan from the previous team had described when she was possessed, right? It was ash. It was like fiery kind of. It was hot but cold at the same time. Like it was very, very weird. Because I know what the feeling is like when I come back to my body and when I go out, kind of. And when I'm awake, there's a different feeling from them when I'm asleep or in meditation. It's all different feelings, right? And so I realized, why am I here? I want to go back to my body. Why am I here? I want to go back to my body. And apparently at this time, Isaac was getting alerted by her son that I was zoning out. Like, I was kind of, like, freaking him out. I was just, like, zoning out. And... Um, long story short, I go to this, I then go get zoomed to this spot of, it's like a road, right? With a car, but the road, like the car doesn't move, but the stuff around the car does almost like you can slide and move and manipulate what's around the car, but the car itself doesn't stationary, right? And I noticed, why am I outside of the car? And what is that thing inside the car? Right? And and this all happened in the span of like five to ten minutes, maybe at the most. Um, I'm like, what the hell? And then something in, in, in me just kind of said like, hey, you're supposed to be in that car. Get in that car. Right? And so I see this thing and it's not necessarily driving because the car is stationary, but it's in and it's this thing. I mean... That looks very dark, okay? And so I basically went up to the front window. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Get the fuck out of my car, right? And so I literally open the door and throw this thing out and body bag it. And I get into the car. Only when I get into the car and I get control of the steering wheel is when I come to, right? Isaac had to go into my mind for us, clear this thing out. And I didn't describe to him what it was. He described to me what he saw and it was exactly what I had seen. And I figured out that I believe that was different psychic ability or different things. Isaac can go. So me and Isaac are pretty much the same, but we're different. I guess that we completely each other. Oh my gosh. Isaac. <laughs> So how he can see, he, he, how, how do we say it? How he uses the mind force to see into your subconscious for me to understand and see what's going on with your vessel. I see this spot. He sees the mind forest. I see this road of some sort, because essentially when I was describing to you guys, the analogy of oppression and possession and the things being in the car and all that. So I was actually going somewhere. I was seeing this as that I was going to the spot and seeing it. Right. So what if I can see if an entity is kind of like really starting to get attached. Like the first almost level of attachment is in your mind, but then the second level of attachment is to your vessel. Right. Mm. And so the thing that was unique is that I saw specific things to the car, how Isaac sees the mind force and can tell you what your trees look like. If there's, dirt and stuff like that the foliage the trees the time of day the color of the moon half full or whole how many stars the, the type of forestry everything yeah it's different for everybody's mind forest yes yeah is how i would see your car and that represents your vessel isaac's car has a dented trunk because of my back yes yeah and then two like different things and my so- headlights are foggy because my eyesight Oh my god. 
But we were just kind of rolling with this, and it made perfect sense. So Isaac heals. How would you say it? How did you? I put it as a sense. I use the physical, right? My ability is physical. I have to feel it with my hands. I use the physical to heal, heal the spiritual, right? You use the spiritual to heal the physical. At least that's our theory. Yeah. I haven't healed anybody's backs or done any of that stuff. So I, mean, don't it's, even, it's a, it's I don't know yet. It's I don't know yet. I don't know. And that kind I mean, of freaks me out. If my back gets fixed because you buff that. out the dents, you know. <laughs> you know. And the it's, a funny, it's a funny analogy. I, but yeah. what's, what's even stranger? Huh. What you saw my vessel as, the vehicle you saw it as. You saw it as a 1987 Bronco. The same Bronco, Ford Bronco, that my grandfather had when I was young. It's the first car from my entire memory. First vehicle I ever remember getting into. The fir- like the oldest vehicle of my memories of my childhood. My grandfather had it for the longest time. I remember it being this like this um like very like crappy painted primer blue color. Like no gloss or nothing. Just <laughs> painted some kind of like he probably used house paint on it. They paint it blue <laughs> to make it look it nice. Sounds like something my grandma would do. Yeah, just to make it look nice, right? And I think it ran for a while. I think my grandfather originally sold it. Um, but how, what you saw it as is funny. It's also the year I was born. So we thought to ourselves, are we, our vehicles the years that we, or sorry, is your vessel car the year you were born? What, what vehicle did you see for yourself? Early 90s Audi. Yeah, well, it's a small car. And you're a small person, so. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Bronco, which I was thinking, I think it'd be more of a truck, but eh, whatever. But how you described where the dents were and the damages where my physical body is damaged. So, of course, my trunk would be damaged because that's where my sciatic nerve pain is, my back. The lower part, right above my right butt cheek. So, the right... <laughs> it's just a funny thing to talk about. Like, it's yeah, so and I weird. And I, and I guarantee my shocks aren't doing so great because of my knees. But then... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so automotive it's, and, and it's yeah it's it's a weird thing but it's how you see it is a perfectly reason how you because you describe possession and oppression yeah. yes and that and that came to me that wasn't just like a thing that i just like okay but that's the thing and that's also going back to sp- like abilities in general your imagination is your greatest is how you achieve greatness with abilities it's also the boundaries you set on your abilities. So if you're a very imaginative person and can find different new and event and innovative ways to kind of picture it and visualize it and manipulate it and, and deal with it, you could do a lot of things. That's how, I mean, that's how I gained strength of my ability is imagination. My ability to create scenarios in my head and see things because I'm a, a diver- divergent thinker, right? Divergent thinker? Yeah. I have I run scenarios in my head. I see movies. I can create out of nowhere. On my inner monologue, I can change the accent of any time I want to because my mind is that kind of... Which also allow me to manifest things into creation. How I use my abilities. How I, how I, I even come up with names for how to describe it, what it looks like. That's all because of my imagination. And the same goes for anybody out there. How you describe what you see and how you feel it will also help you understand your abilities better. And for the conspiracy theories out there, there is stuff. Uh, it makes sense of why, you know, at an early age, a lot of people tell you, quit with your imagination. Imagination is only for children. Don't use your imagination. Don't think outside of the box. Imagine if people continued thinking with a high level of imagination. A lot of abilities would flourish, I think, personally. Well, that's why we have more free thinking minds now, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen until later in life. Um, but one thing I always say that sometimes the visual can help strengthen your ability. A thought can be unlocked by something you visually see. For example, I wanted to save this to Shadow Walker Part 7, but there's not a lot of information for Shadow Walker Part 7, and this is a small detail. I've talked about in Shadow Walker 1 through 6 that I don't need. Elemental energies of certain entities that I pulled, I absorbed the elemental energy off of them. So fire, air, water, um, and electricity. Electricity was kind of the first element that I mastered because it came to me. But the others I had to pull off of entities that I came across. So Mike, from the paranormal, he was all like, well, what about Earth? You're going to get Earth, right? Have all the elements, essentially? I'm like, I don't know. What would be the purpose of Earth, right? 
I I thought the same thing about water. What would be the purpose of water? Why would I need water for? Electricity, fire, that makes sense. It damages. But water, mixed with wind, can cause ice and freeze an entity. So, it makes sense. So, what would Earth be a purpose? Like, I don't see myself throwing vines at people or using, <laughs> using dirt. But I had a very adamant urge to watch Dune. The original, the first one. Not the, And like, if, you, if you have an itch to listen to certain music, to look at something, to read a book, to watch a movie, do it. Yes. And I explain this because, like, I watched Dune, the first, not the 1980s one, ugh, uh, the one with, of course, uh, Timothy Chalamet guy. Um, what? Because when it came out, I didn't have the elemental abilities. The first movie didn't come out. Dune 2, I haven't seen yet. I want to see it. But I wanted to watch Dune again. And I was like, I don't know why I don't want to do it again. Eh, let me watch it. So I watched the whole thing through. And towards the end of the movie, all of a sudden, my hand, I was spending energy in my hand. All of a sudden, I saw sand. My tendrils weren't strings anymore. There was spinning sand in my hand. And then I gained the earth elemental ability. According to my spear guidance, that was always in me. It just needed the right unlocking to do so. Knowing that I can control elemental abilities to with my tendrils led me to that. But I didn't know which earth elemental that I could control until I saw how sand moves and undulates like water. And every grain of sand is a piece of my tendril when it, I can pour it into the location. So combining the wind tornado and the sand, creating basically a sandstorm, I can pull more energy from a location because every grain of sand, and we all know how small grains of sand are because we get them in our shoes and it's impossible to get out. Imagine every little grain of sand is a t- piece of my tendril pulling dark energy from a location. I can get into every crack and crevice of a location and pull every piece mint school microscopic piece of dark energy from a location therefore creating my ability stronger than it already was now i have all the elements in my hand well electricity can really consider an element but the others because i watched doom that makes that made me wonder you know how you even said from watching Haunting, Haunting Hill, Hill House, House yeah. and you we also got ideas from watching Stranger Things, The Upside Down. We have described Ooh, in other that episodes was, before. That was yeah. That so was. sometimes a piece of media can give you the visualization of an idea that you didn't have before, that unlock a thought, a process of thinking, a way to establish your abilities that you can even consider. Even music. Sometimes you listen to a certain piece of music, all of a sudden, boom, you get an idea like I didn't think of it like that, and then all of a sudden you. Now can strengthen well, your ability. I could tell you, like, I guess the original piece that kind of sparked all of the memory thing was actually watching Wednesday. Yeah. When she would touch, I mean, I don't do that dramatic, like, where <laughs> arch the head back kind of thing. And your eyes rolling back your head. Yeah, that, that would be weird. Um, but, like, for instance, another thing that I don't really even talk about, too, is, like, when I'm at locations, sometimes a spirit will almost, like channel onto me what happened to them there's been multiple times like i've wanted to cry i've wanted to scream i've wanted to say certain things that aren't even it doesn't even sound like me but i hold that back because whoever we're with i don't want to freak anybody out or anybody on lives or whatever whatever but i hold back on that but that has been a lot of a lot of times so i guess that is a good place to stop I think i've hit every note hopefully i'm gonna be i'll make instagram post oh another thing too that is also kind of a new thing is energy alchemy i don't know if anybody has kind of like heard about that it's basically energy manipulation taking something and kind of manipulating it and 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 changing it around that has also been something that's been brought up to me i don't know exactly how that's gonna work within my abilities but we shall see Yes, and I told you, if you can turn pieces of things to gold, that'd uh, be nice. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, but it's it's not necessarily like that. It's like basically taking negative, throwing into positive. I think that's going to end up kind of going with a location, like instead of like pumping negative energy into something, it's going to be taking that negative energy and recycling it back positive. So, I don't yeah. know, we shall see. But, um... We, you felt necessary to release this episode. Oh, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this was a big pull, and it was so much so now. So I hope it helps somebody out there and somebody feels, like, good and starts on their journey and 
like I said, if you need any help or any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, cause if, you know, like I can't get to you, Isaac will, and Isaac has a good perspective on things. Um, so, uh, so if you listen to this, uh, episode, the bonus episode with young William again, yes, he is really cool to listen to. I know you guys had a lot of positive feedback to give us last time he was on here. Young William from WTCW paranormal. Yes. Um, I get good vibes from him, just so anybody's wondering and asking. Yeah. So. <laughs> I guarantee he will. Yeah. Hey, did, you, did you like me? Yeah. Um, no, I always tell... I feel like I weird him out, though, a little bit when I do talk about it, because I don't know. I always say about him is he has a good head on his shoulders. Yeah. But he also is far mature and wise beyond his years. And the fact that he has his shit together now, and he's, he's not even considered a legal adult yet, yeah. and he's got all this figured out, exactly how to do it, there's no doubt in my mind he is going to be a pronou- pronounced person in the paranormal world by the time he's my age, right? He's going he's gonna to have it all figured out. He's going to be well-known, probably his own show, whatever. Because this, if he keeps on it, the sky's the limit for him. Yeah. But, yeah, in our interview we did, we talked more, and I asked him more deeper questions this time around to get his better perspective. And he also tells me a story that will scare the shit out of you. I guarantee it. But, um... Yeah, so look forward to that episode, and then what's after that? So after that, we are talking about... The Collins Elite? Yes. yes. I don't know why Cliff's tail came up. Cliff's tail? <laughs> Sorry, Cliff, and your tail. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I literally was about to spurt out Cliff's tail, and I was like, that's not... Collins Elite deeps, dives a little bit into the conspiracy, also spirituality at the same time, associating aliens and demons together. So when I heard the story about the Collins Elite, I wanted to know more. And we're going to take you on the ride talking about it. Plus, they're not entirely wrong. Just keep that in mind. And I'll explain with one of my personal experiences of why they might not be entirely wrong. Anyway, um, and that's releasing when? Friday later this week. Hopefully. hopefully. Unless we get a random case out of nowhere. Nah, I think we'll be able to do it. Hopefully. Ooh, hopefully. I, I hate putting... <laughs> I, hate putting stuff over. <laughs> I hate putting a date because then I feel like when I put a date, it's almost like a curse not to get it out. So, you get it when you get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, butthead. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, so... Uh, you can catch our social medias at Hidden in the Shadows Podcast on Instagram. Cornholio, I need TB for my bunghole. <laughs> I used to have a poster of that. I don't know where it went. It's in our storage. It's, it is? All okay, right. so when we have our own place, <laughs> I will put that in. Hidden in the 6 on X. Hidden in the Shadows Podcast 2 on TikTok. Our links to all our social media and always you can listen to us at Hidden in the Shadows com. Also, we have a paranormal page, Hidden in the Shadows Paranormal on Instagram. So if you're dealing with any cases or have any paranormal questions, psychic mediumship or shaman, whatever, uh, you can message it there or on the Instagram or email us through the website. Also, the Facebook, I don't, I totally forget we have it. Yeah, we have a Facebook. Believe it or not, we've been getting some traction on there, which is kind of weird. What's because... it on Facebook? I don't know. What? What's it on Facebook? Because I don't know. Oh, just hidden in the shadows. Okay. I, that's not what I heard at all. No, I heard you. Like, what did he sat on? What did he sat on? Yeah, I don't What's know. What's the Facebook? What did he sat on? What's the Facebook? Anyway. He always does that, but everybody here knows he mumbles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. With that being said, we'll catch your weirdos in the next one. Yes. <laughs>